going to be having two public hearings. I'd like to call to order the Monday, June 21st, 6.30 public hearing to order in accordance with the Chapter 20, Acts of 2021, signed by Governor Charles D. Baker, June 16th, 2021, extending certain provisions for the open meeting law, general law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, a meeting of the Ordinance Committee for the City Quincy, Quincy City Council will be covering, will be convening the public hearings via remote conferencing services on that will air on Quincy Access Television, QATV channel, QATV9, government access. And then I'm gonna also open open to um, the open meeting law. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit this meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledgeable and permissible. Um, if you could, Jen, if you could call roll call, that would be great. Council Andronico. Present. Council Kane. Present. Council DeBona. Present. Council Harris. Council Liang. Present. Council Harris, present. Okay. So. Council McCarthy. Present. Council Pamucci. Present. Council Phelan. Present. Chairman Mahoney, you have nine members. Great, thank you very much. So tonight the public hearing is um, on council orders 2021-063, ordinance to accept acceptance of General James McConville Way and order 2021-064, ordinance to accept acceptance of General Joseph F. Dunford Drive. At this point, I'd like to ask anybody wishing to speak in favor or opposition to use the raise hand feature. Um, when you And when you are called on, please state your name and address. Um, I don't see anybody. Jen, do you see anybody? No, I don't see anyone. Oh, there's somebody. Um, it looks like it's not a name. So um, it's John Rodefell, I believe. Oh, it's John Rodefell. Okay. So yeah, John? That's, me. that's my backup okay. camera. That's my backup camera. <laughs> okay, John, you have a lot of feedback, so I'm just gonna let you know. So but you have the floor. Actually, can you let me close this one? <laughs> okay, that's better, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, John Rotafail, 62 um, Gremwall Road. I was just going to make a suggestion. I know it's cool to name streets after Quincy people or people that did something cool in Quincy. But what I would kind of like to see is, you know, why don't we name a street after an ex-president, whether it be Trump Boulevard or Obama Boulevard or Clinton Boulevard. But, you know, let's give some respect to someone or even if we want to call something Warren Way for Elizabeth Warren. But, you know, I would like to go national, you know, um, you know, we don't have a Martin Luther King Boulevard or Martin Luther King Drive anywhere in Quincy. So, um, you know, I'm just making a suggestion of, you know, we put something out there where everyone is sort of can say, OK, we support that. Now, I guess it really could backfire because, you know, if we could have named something after someone, they might not like that name in the future. But I just think that it'd be nice to honor a president somewhere in the city. I honestly, myself, I, I haven't heard anybody anywhere. I don't know anywhere in Massachusetts where there's something called um, Obama. I know we're never going to have something in Quincy called Trump Drive, but, you know, it would be interesting. I mean, we seem to be a really big blue democratic city. And if we really are a big blue democratic city, then we should support a president. I, I, I wouldn't support Biden Boulevard, but I would support a Obama place or something like that, you know, like right up in the middle of city hall or not city hall, but you know, cause no one really knows who these people are. And then, you know, uh, a military thing, it's kind of, some people aren't always on board with, with all the military. I personally, myself, I support the military. I think the military does a great job. So, I mean, I am in support of that. So 
I'm in support of both of these things. I'm just making a suggestion for something in the future. So it's up to the city councilors to figure that out. But thank you very much for letting me speak. Thank you. Okay. I don't see anybody else raising their hand. And there were no written correspondences that have been received by the clerk of committees at this time. So I'm just going to ask one more time, does anybody, would anybody like to speak in favor or against? Okay. And with that, I'm going to, um, there's no further comment. I'm going to close this public hearing. I believe it is 635. Okay. So we're going to go right into the next public hearing. Um, yeah, the next one is at 635. It's going to open up the June 21st, 635 public hearing to order. This public hearing is on Council of Orders 2021-054. It's the ordinance to amendment of the Municipal Code, Chapter 300, Article 2, Stormwater Management and Land, Dis Land Disturbance Ordinance. And 2021-055, the ordinance is to amend the Zoning Code, Section 8.0, Special Districts, 8.1 Floodplain Overlay. Um, so at this point, again, I would just like to open up um, the opportunity for people to speak in favor or opposition. If you could raise your hand when you are called upon, we can state your name and address. Citizen Rotafel. Shocker. I wish there was more people that were speaking. <laughs> Okay, I mean, that's I'm okay. sorry that, that okay. I'm the only one that's here to speak. And it's really a shame that I'm pretty much one of the lone voices speaking on behalf of Quincy. There's Mr. Zamzow, okay? And if, you know, call me Mr. Rotafil next time, Mr. Zamzow, by the way. Um, Any, you know, I'm gonna say this. I know this might be a crazy suggestion, but how about we stop building in flood zones? And how about we start really being conservative and start really taking conservation seriously. You know, I mean, I would love to do that because if we keep building in the flood zones, what's going to happen is that the people who were already here who built in the lands that weren't in the flood zone, they're, they're going to be in hardships. And, you know, I truly, Quincy is one of the few communities anywhere on the ocean states or the ocean cities where they let you build outside the footprints. So we're, we're actually expanding, you know, we are losing so many square feet on a daily basis in the city of Quincy. And we actually supposed to be going in the opposite direction. We need to be gaining square feet because floodwaters are rising and it's just about math. So, um, you know, I really wish that we all get better at math and we all get better on, the zoning and we get better on this flood and the conservation because it seems that most of the zoning variances that we do give in this city are given to people for floodplain variances. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of why don't just, I might be crazy, but someone make a, a motion or pass something that says that you can't build outside your footprint in a flood zone. That would be a good rule to put on the book. And also another cool thing would be, I just went to a meeting on something where they're going to build something in an in industrial zone. There's really no parameters on what you can and what you cannot do in an industrial zone. It, you know, the old parameter was you, you couldn't build residential there. But since we're building residential now in all industrial zones, it's time for the city councilors to put some parameters in what you can build anywhere whether it's residential C any John, place. We're gonna stick John if we could stick I appreciate it I do actually appreciate what you're saying and in in what you're what you're talking about we're talking about these two these two ordinances but but I do appreciate it and I think I, I, I appreciate your your comments well we have to I'm, I'm really concerned about protecting the the earth but, but I, you know I, and, I, you know protecting the land in Quincy and really really taking it seriously and you know it, it's you know we're the keepers of the land and it's about just yeah. You know, I, I tell you the truth, I really have no idea what's in any of these things you're trying to pass right now. And I really don't think many of the people who are watching or the people who are even voting on this 
There seems to be agenda driven on why they're changing the zoning, but it seems to be getting more easier for the developers, not better for the people. That's just my point. John, I did review them and it's really just terminology changes and, and also application changes of how the application is filled out. But we'll get into that in the next piece. So I'm going to move on to Mr. Okay, Zamzo. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Zamzo, you have the you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Our Chair Mahoney. Uh, Councillor uh, Bill Zamzo, 350, 346 Washington Street. Councillors, it's only reasonable to assume that Ordinance 2021-054, proposing to amend Municipal Code Chapter 30, Article 2, Stormwater Management, is before you as a result of the administration recently reaching a settlement agreement with the EPA over a long, ongoing pollution litigation against the city. Point of order. Point of order, Mr. Harris. Yes, um, mentioned 2021-054. Uh, the public hearing is on 2021-064. Uh, I'm sorry if I did the wrong number. Are we talking about the, I wrote it down as 21 20 It's 2021-054. It's, are it's we talking? 2021-055. Yep, no, is that what we are addressing at this point? That was my understanding. Yep. Or is that coming up? Nope, that's that's what we're addressing. Okay, if I transpose the numbers, I'm dyslexic, so bear with me. Okay. Um, in any event, before I was interrupted, as regards the likelihood that this is a tied to the recent EPA settlement, I would respectfully call upon the council to schedule a presentation by the EPA in the fall to provide granularity as to what all the settlement agreement has imposed upon the city of Quincy as well as a presentation by the Department of Public Works and what it's planning to do to duly abide by that agreement. For example, the city of Quincy is facing direct oversight by the EPA for the next 13 years as regards the city affecting mandated fixes. It's only proper that water and sewer ratepayers will be paying for the needed repairs and upgrading of local sewer lines and storm drains know what's coming. This further is further only in order to correct, this is also a good idea to correct some at least misleading statements by the administration in the wake of opting to settle, specifically how the city fought for a lower cost repairs. Reality, water quality standards must be met and the EPA will be insisting that compliance with these standards must be met. At best, Quincy must be able to offer alternative approaches, might be able to offer alternative approaches and rejiggering the scheduling of events, but that's about it. Next. The Bill, if, Bill, can, I'm going to I'm going to ask because I'm just trying to keep everybody to a certain amount of time. If we could start thinking about wrapping it up, I know that you're I'm close. Like, you know, I you know if if Mr. Harris hadn't interrupted me. Um, uh, next, the, another minute. Yep. Uh, next, the mayor said claimed that the city successfully prevailed on seeing what could have been hundreds of millions of dollars in fines negotiated down to about 115 thousand. This is nonsense. Sanctions at the max are theoretical only for the most egregious of cases by private entities. For government entities such as the city of Quincy, the EPA does not find anywhere near the theoretical max is it does not see any public good to whack innocent taxpayers or fine ratepayers with huge fines. At the same time, 115,000 is a pretty stiff fine imposed upon a municipality. And for the final bit of nonsense out of the administration is how the city has since it has been sending six, spending six to eight million a year on sewer and drain renovation work, that the EPA ordered work will not impact water and sewer rates. This is nonsense. Is the EPA order only pertains to about a fraction of the city sewer and drain system and sewer system, and it, the only way the administration's claim could theoretically work is if no sewer work around Quincy outside of the EPA mandated air is not done for the next 13 years. Thank you Thanks, for your consideration, Bill. and I look forward to hearing next fall. Okay, Bill, we're at time, and this I, I don't think this this ordinance actually relates to it, but we will get we will get into it. So I do appreciate it. Is anybody else willing? Anybody else? Look okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bill. Um, anybody else looking to speak in favor or against? Okay, I don't see anybody. We also had no written correspondence in regards to this received by the clerks of the committee at this time. We had two people speaking um, in, um, in the negative for it. I'm going to close the public 
portion of this public hearing and it is um, 645. Thank you, everybody. Now, if I can get my stuff together. Um, I'm gonna open, so we were supposed to start right at 640, so we're gonna open the ordinance committee meeting and we're gonna start with the 2021-054, the ordinance amendment to the municipal code, chapter 300, article two, stormwater management and land distribution dis dis dispersion ordinance. Um, I believe we have um, Joshe Jr. Um, and we have El Grazioso here with us tonight. Um, I'm gonna go through these one by one. So if I could have, um, Mr. Shea, if we could speak on this in regards to the changes that are having, from what I understand, they are, we're matching language to the state and federal government, and there's a couple of, um, of um, application um, forms that are being um, updated as well, but if you could just speak on that for me. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, you are correct. Uh, I am Joe Shea. I'm with Granite City Partners, um, and this evening, the this order and the next order will be uh, presented by the Commissioner of Public Works, Al Grazioso, City Engineer, Paul Costello, and the uh, Director of Inspectional Services, Jay Duca. Uh, for the order that is in front of you, uh, the changes regarding stormwater management and land disturbance are, are housekeeping in nature. Uh, these are items that we've been working on for about five months to ensure that the city's ordinances are in alignment with state and federal suggestions on the matter. Um, uh, just to speak to a point that just came up, this order has been, been again worked on for about five months. It is not tied to any recent news in the headlines from the EPA. Uh, the city has always strived to be in alignment with the EPA's stormwater management or MS4 program. Uh, and this order was a step to continue to stay in that alignment. Um, with that, I want to uh, hand it to Commissioner Grazioso for an introduction and then Paul Costello, and then I can uh, speak to some of the technical details. Thank you. Uh, good evening uh, to you, uh, Madam Chairman. Um, yeah, to reiterate what Mr. Shea said, this is uh, an update to comply with the requirements of uh, the USA EPA 2016 MS4 general permit. We updated the definitions to provide more clarity to app for applicants, clarified the municipal roadway exemption. Uh, we added a description of the permit review process. We included language for the public to review and comment on permits. We updated performance standards for the MS4 permit requirements um, with more detail for inspections. And we updated the water quality criteria for new development and redevelopment. Um, this needs to be approved by June 30th as it says it's, it's part of our MS4 requirements. Um, mm -hmm. City engineer Paul Costello is here. I'm sure he can answer any questions uh, regarding this, regarding the MS4, if uh, anyone has questions. Okay, like this, at this point, I'd like to open up to my colleagues. Does anybody have any questions in regards to Ordinance 2021-054? Nina Liang, Nina, Council Liang, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't know if this is going to go to Al or to Joe or to Paul, but I'm just curious. So um, Chairwoman Mahoney asked for a red line version, which was super helpful to be able to go through and actually see the specific changes with the language that's being asked of us. And so I'm just curious, uh, Al, to your point, a lot of it is actually um, definition changes, but who worked on the actual ordinance itself with these changes? I, it, you said it was a based off recommendations and following guidelines and updates with the EPA, but who actually put the recommended changes in front of us? This was a combination um, with city engineer, Mr. Costello, and um, uh, Mr. Shea, uh, Granite City Partners, and Wood in the current. Okay, and when was the last time it was updated, the language that we have in here? Uh, 2015. 2015. Okay, so is this common where it's every five or six years that this language has to get updated, or what's our thought process moving forward and just making sure that, again, we're keeping things up to date? Uh, I can I can speak to that one. Or Paul Costello, would you like to? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. The 
the draft general permit under the stormwater program was issued in 2018 um, in final form. A draft permit came out in 2015 and the city was very proactive, unlike other communities, and developed a set of stormwater regulations. That was the original version of the documents uh, that you have in front of us. That was adopted by the council in June 2015. Uh, the, the MS4 permit, uh, we signed the notice of intent on in 2018, September, and the certain requirements that have to be met before the end of this fiscal year. So the, the changes you see before you are very minor in nature, and it's based on the final general permit versus the draft permit. Uh, that the city was was working under. And just to speak to one point earlier, some of the changes in this document will make it harder to develop in floodplain areas. Okay, thank you. You know, like I said earlier, when Chairman Mahoney asked for um, the red line version to come over, it was much easier to go through and process, again, just the changes in definitions. I was just curious about procedurally, you know, where we are in that process and what it looks like moving forward um, with any future changes. But thank you. Thank you, Chairman Mahoney. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions in regards to this ordinance? I'm not seeing anybody. Does anybody want to make a motion to approve this ordinance? Council McCarthy is ready. Yeah, I'm, I was going to make a motion to approve. Oh. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Um, and I don't need a second for that to move that out, correct? Clark? Okay. Um, okay. All right, so we'll move on to um, order 2021. We need a vote though. Oh, sorry, we do need a vote. So if we could take a roll call vote. I was just jumping ahead. I was ready to do sure. the next one. Council Andronico. Yes. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. Chairman Mahoney. Yes. My members, positive recommendation. Thank you. I was thinking I was grouping them. 2020-055, um, um, the ordinance amending to the zoning code section 8.0, special districts 8.1, floodplain overlay district. Um, again, I think, um, Mr. Shea, do you want to do you want to start this off? I don't, I'm not sure if this is, um, I'm, I'm forgetting if this is Mr. Duca that's going to be doing um, it. I will. I'm happily, we'll, we'll make a, a very similar introduction. Um, and just from a global standpoint, I think the best way to think of these two matters is that when when you're dealing with vertical construction in certain areas within in the city, inspectional services or Jay Duca is at is is at the wheel, and and DPW Commissioner Grazioso and Paul Costello are in the passenger seat. When it's a horizontal construction project, it's flipped. So we just went through the ordinance where DPW is the lead, and inspectional services follows second. Um, the floodplain overlay district is reversed. The inspectional services is the primary department and DPW is the secondary department. Uh, but with that context, this ordinance is an update uh, to a previous ordinance with language uh, set to comply with the state's stormwater standard language and some FEMA floodplain definitions. Uh, so the, the effectively the housekeeping updates here are to incorporate the new state language and federal language. Uh, it strengthens restrictions around floodways, uh, which is to one of the um, commenters during the public hearing. Uh, there are much stronger standards for construction around floodways uh, when this zoning overlay district has been triggered. Uh, and this these edits also expand the administration of the permitting process for applications, uh, for applicants, excuse me. So the applicants have to do some additional work, especially in jurisdictional zones. Um, most of those applications come to the director of inspectional services, Jay Duca, who is the city's floodplain manager. Um, with that, Jay, would you add any other uh, comments on the floodplain overlay district ordinance updates? No, I think you captured everything, Joe. Uh, we just want to bring everything in line with the National Flood Insurance Program uh, and in, with, in line with the building code that we, uh, the ninth edition building code that we have today. And, and it's more or less housekeeping like you uh, alluded to. Thank you. Um, I will say for the counselors who got to see the markup, 
Um, with the city shifting to their online ordinance, I realized this markup was very colorful. There was a, there was a lot of um, colorful changes, mostly due to formatting. Um, so some of the edits may look a little more um, burdensome than they actually were, purely because of formatting. Thank you very much, Mr. Shea. Hey, Mr. Uh, Council McCarthy. Thank you, Chairwoman Mahoney. Um, I'd like to make, make a motion to approve. Thank you very much. We have a motion to approve. Any other questions? Madam Chair. Um, Councilor Phelan. Um, just a qu question. I, I think it would be to Jay. So the, just areas like we know that at, at Ward 5 that have bad flooding, particularly down by the beach, strand area, would this affect those areas, this law in terms of building and stuff down there? Well, I think the housekeeping part of it adopts uh, the very latest maps and allows us to keep adopting the maps without having to go back to the council. We can automatically, as uh, flood, flood areas, uh, the elevations change, we're able to uh, adopt those uh, sort of on the fly. But uh, the building, building in the flood zone is, as you know, requires uh, to be built above the base flood. I don't, I don't know that much would change in, in that respect as far as building in the floodplain. So pretty much the laws that are already there or what are on is this more changing of wording and stuff like that is to meet the the, the, the qualifications of the state. Would yeah they, a, the state has ramped up their auditing of what we do in the city as we comply with the national flood insurance program. Uh, there's audits. We have to ha now have policies and procedures in place. And this is the kind of language um, that it becomes more in line with the National Flood Insurance Program. Yes, and I want to add just a little yeah, bit of, um, um, I can add some color to that too, um, Councillor. And in, in for example, in your ward, uh, the expanded permitting requirements does require applicants to not only to apply to Jay's department, but in many situations to notify the state's national floodplain program coordinator at DCR. So that, that's an example of there is, there is the expansion of some of the permitting requirements. Um, I do wanna make one clarification um, in that the, this order does not approve any modifications to the floodplain maps. Um, when Mr. J, when you just said um, this allows us to incorporate reference to the floodplains on the fly. That means that in the future, counselors, when you go through a very deliberate process with the new flood maps, we don't have to come back to you to update this ordinance again. It's, uh, it's written in anticipation of future flood maps coming to Quincy. Okay. Thank you for that clarification, Joe. All right. That's good. That's good. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have any other questions in regards to this? Um, I just have one quick question. Um, Mr. Shea, if you could, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of bearing the time. Um, when you say, what, if the flood maps change, you would be bringing those back to the council though, correct? That, that is correct. Yes. Every, okay. every five or six years, new, new flood maps are issued or update flood maps, updated yeah. flood maps are issued. We would expect that sometime. Um, I'm going to guess late 2021, 22, but they're, they're not on the docket and um, not directly related to this order tonight. I just want to appreciate that. I want that clarification. I want everybody at home that, that because that's a very sensitive subject and we always want to make sure people have full understanding yes. of what's happening. Um, with that, we have a motion um, to approve. If we could call the roll order for that, please. Council Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Yang. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Council yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. And a positive recommendation. So we have a minute to do 2020 um, 2021-055. This is an ordinance. Um, actually, that's the wrong one. Sorry. 2021-063 and 2021-064. First one is the ordinance to accept General James McConville Way. And 064 is the acceptance of General Joseph 
F Dumfrit Drive. Um, these are for the, the new roads down to the bridge, to the, um, the General's Bridge. Make a motion. Make, Make a motion. Motion, by, motion to approve by Mr. Phelan. Any, any questions on the motion? Not seeing any. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Council Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Pamucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Nine members. Positive recommendation. And with that, I would like to close the ordinance meeting. Um, it's just at seven o'clock. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, so we're going to go more right into the regularly scheduled council meeting of Monday, June 21st. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Present. Councilor Kane. Present. Councilor DeBona. Present. Councilor Harris. Present. Council Mahoney. Present. Council McCarthy. Present. Council Palmucci. Present. Councilor Phelan. Present. President Liang. Present. Nine members, you have a quorum. Thank you. If we could all just mute ourselves and take a moment of silence in honor of all the women and men currently serving here and abroad, as well as all of those uh, still on the front lines of this pandemic. Thank you so much. Madam Clerk, could you read the open meeting law, please? Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Thank you. And in accordance with Chapter 20 um, of the Acts of 2021, signed by Governor Charles D. Baker on June 16, 2021, extending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, General Law, Chapter 38, Section 20, the Quincy City Council will be convening via remote video conferencing services that will air on Quincy Access Television, QATV, Channel QATV9, Government Access. Madam Clerk, first item on the agenda, please. 2021-065, an appropriation for $1,245,500 $43.07 for year end transfers. Thank you. I'm going to go to either Mr. Walker or Susan if they have anything they'd like to say beforehand. Otherwise, I'm just going to open it right up to my colleagues. All right, I see Mr. Mason here as well. Thank you. No, everybody's shaking their head. Um, if I could, Susan, if for just so I'm not repeating myself for each of these appropriations. Would it be possible if um, you could just let us know how much is currently in the account and then um, what the items are for as well, specifically for this first one, I think. Um, and it says year in transfers. It doesn't say any departments or anything like that. So I guess that's my question, question just for Stephen for the first one is, okay, uh, how much is left out of the account that this is coming from and then what is the item for? Thank okay. You. So um, it appears that the item is for a court judgment and that is your first, where it says judgments and settlements. Mm -hmm. So they, the administration or the finance department is looking to cover a ju um, judgment totaling, I believe it was $1.35 million. And this is to cover the difference. So what they're doing is they're taking from under the from column, you'll see various different departments with different dollar amounts. So these are amounts that are in these departments or in these lines that they are projecting will not be spent between now and the end of the fiscal year. So they're taking those funds and they're covering this deficit prior to the end of the fiscal year. Okay, thank you, Susan. Um, yep. and then I do have two follow-up questions to that, but again, I do wanna open it up to my colleagues if they have any questions, I don't wanna take up the space first. I don't see anybody raising their hands. Okay, um, I'm gonna keep an eye out for, oh, Councilor Mahoney, and then I'll come back. Sorry about that, I was on mute. I just have a quick question. I, usually when we're doing these, and I could be wrong, but the department, inter, inter-department transitions, we just have the judgment and settlements and work, workers comp and personal services. Were there any other departments that we had to do any transfers for? Is this the only one this year? 
Do you want me to answer that or do you want um, Eric Mason to answer that? Mr. Mason or whoever can answer that would be great. These are the, these are the only departments, Counselor. They're the only departments. So there's no other departments that were, were, um, that were in the overspending that we might have paid from any other place? Um, we paid from other places, but not within the uh, in, not within the general fund, so they haven't needed council approval. Um, the okay. other funds are um, their COVID-related expenses that were charged to the general fund that then were able to be removed to the COVID fund. Okay. If it's possible, because normally at this point, this is when we would be saying those things, it would be great if we could see, I understand that this one is an order that we're doing tonight, but if we could see maybe the other departments that we're paying out of the, the um the COVID funds, just uh, an amount and a total, because we're going to be going to budgetary season already. And then also any other department that might have, um, if there are any any departments that might have um, potential excess at the end of the year, that would be helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Of course. Any other questions from my colleagues? Okay, thanks. I'm going to grab it back for a minute, if that's okay. Um, so, Sue, to, to answer the question um, about the the other departments that it's coming from on that line, Susan, thank you for pointing it out where it says from, and then it has, I think about 10 different lines from different departments where the funds are being pulled from. Um, I would also like to see ideally what lines uh, specifically, like if that's coming from personal services, great, but what else, what does personal services entail, right? And then the second question I have to that is, um, what is this judgment for exactly? I, I see that it's for a judgment in a settlement, but can we get some information on what the judgment and settlement was for? Uh, yes, yes, you, you can, Counselor. I, do, I did not have the backup for that. Um, all I can see in the Muni system that it was a court judgment between the city and, of Quincy and um, a particular person. Um, I don't know if the administration wants to speak on that. Okay. I do see Mr. Walker, Mr. Timmons, and Mr. Mason as well, so whoever can answer that. Again, obviously, just I don't know any details, but... <laughs> Sure, Madam President. Uh, Solicitor Timmons is available uh, to speak on this matter. Thank you, Mr. Timmons. Uh, good evening, Madam President, uh, members. I um, This is a matter where uh, we had a trial in 2016 over a permitting dispute that originated back in 2007 with the city. Um, a gentleman who owned a lot of land, um, and I'm saying a lot versus much land. A gentleman who owned a lot down in Howes Neck off of Manatee Ave sought a uh, permit from the Conservation Commission to build on the lot, and the permit was denied by that commission. Um, he appealed the denial that appeal went through the court system. And then after um, that appeal concluded, he filed a lawsuit claiming that his constitutional rights to develop his land had been abridged. Um, the matter went to a jury trial in 2016. Uh, the gentleman obtained a favorable verdict. And he recovered legal fees. And we filed an appeal of that that went up to the appeals court um, we sought what they call further appellate review at the SJC, um, and uh, the appeals court sustained the verdict. The SJC refused to hear any, anything further, so the judgment became final at that point. Um, the case was remanded back, however, by the appeals court for further trial, so at that point we started to talk with the uh, attorneys for the plaintiff. And we ended up um, settling on the amount of 1.35 million. Um, Madam Auditor had that number correct. And in addition to settling for that amount, the judgment was entered against the city of Quincy. The original judgment by the jury, um, they found um, personal liability on the part of some of the Conservation Commission members. And um, that was extremely unfortunate and um you know we did not want to see a jury verdict against some individuals who are just performing their civic duty as conservation commission members but uh the jury found differently and thought something had gone on 
And so part of the judgment here is that it's entered against the city of Quincy and not against any of the individuals. So we regard the, although the matter was very difficult, um, you know, we regard the outcome as the best we could do in light of the circumstances. And this is just, um, and Councilor Mahoney actually called to ask about this, wondering if it was multiple judgments or just one case. And uh, we spoke about it. And this is just one case. Um, it's been highly unusual over the past, you know, 12 years of our administration, as you know, um, we've been able to manage things within our budgets, but um, this is a, a tough outcome, but this we're resolving it with the payment that was made and then making this adjustment tonight in terms of the budget. Okay, thank you, Mr. Solicitor. So it was 1.35 for the total settlement and the adjustment to cover it is, is the request here for the 1.25, correct? That's correct. Thank you. I appreciate the, the clarification. Uh, I do see Council Bramucci's hand raised as well. So Council Bramucci, I'll go to you. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, Mr. Solicitor, what, uh, what if any remedial action has uh, been taken with respect to the CONCOM as a result of the, of the decision? I know it's a 2007 decision. I don't know if the members are the same or if the policies are the same. Has, has anything been, been done to correct the $1.3 million mistake? Sure. Um, I, I would say, and I certainly understand the question, um, but what I would tell you is this. I, I feel that the Conservation Commission members at the time were acting in complete good faith. Um, the jury obviously found otherwise, but we did educate people on a couple of different ways uh, that they could handle things a little differently. And one major change that was made that has resulted in some uh, dramatic improvement is that Jay Duca, uh, Commissioner Duca, took over um, conservation, and and now everything runs directly through him and under him. And as a result, we've linked folks who are seeking um, wetlands permits um, to their building permit process, and it results in a more efficient and uh, smooth process. So. Um, there wasn't so much action that had to be corrected, I, I believe at least, um, although we did look at it. And obviously, if you have to defend a claim, as you know, Counselor, as an attorney and practicing litigation yourself, you look at the full 360 degrees of the matters. And I, I learned a lot about what the people did, why they did what they did. And, um, you know, I, I do think to the extent there was corrective measure to be taken, um, that the change in how uh, the process works and getting into Commissioner, it's, uh, I guess it's Commissioner Duca, getting it into his hands earlier has been a, a very productive and positive change. Thank you. I, that's a, I think that's a, a good explanation of what, what's occurred. Uh, uh, these boards, uh, you know, many of these boards and commissions in the, in the city, they're, they, um, they do a ton of work and they're, and they're volunteers. So it's certainly not trying to you know, chastise anybody. And again, I don't know who was on the board at that time, to be honest with you, or, or even what the details of this case are about. I just, when I see a $1.3 million judgment, clearly a, a jury thought something was done wrong. So it's nice to hear that we have taken some, some actions to streamline the process and make sure there's um, uh, improved oversight. Uh, with any government operations, I think there's always room for improvement. But, you know, I think no, the, the folks who serve on the CONCON -Con now, who served in the past, on many of our other boards and, and commissions like the zoning board and the planning board. And, and obviously the, I mean, those guys get sued all the time just as a matter of, of form. If you're appealing a zoning um, variance or, or a zoning permit, you're gonna sue both collectively and individually the members. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad um, I'm glad this is resolved and, and that we've, we've moved on from it in a positive way. So thank you, Mr. Timmons. Yes, thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Are there any other questions on this specific item from anybody? Okay. Um, can I get a motion from someone to move it? I move approval. Okay. I have a motion to approve by Councillor Pramuchi. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Phelan. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councillor Andronico. Yes. Councillor Kane. Yes. Councillor DeBona. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. 
Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. And passes. Thank you. Number two, please, Madam Clerk. 2021-066, an appropriation for 600,000 to traffic parking alarm and lighting personal services from reserved for appropriation park and receipts. Thank you. Do we have any questions or any motions on this item? This Council Mahoney? Just a quick question. Is this the amount that, that's in the reserves or is there more in the reserves? Just curious. Um, there, there is currently seven hundred and eighty-eight thousand um, dollars in that in that particular account at this time, and that is probably posted through. Um, I would say it's posted through the beginning of June, so there is another month of receipts that are accepted in. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions on this item? Okay. No, motion, motion to approve. Thank you, Council McCarthy. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Andronico. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, number three, please, Madam Clerk. 2021-067, an appropriation for $50,284 to Parks Department Personal Services from Community Preservation Funds Administration. Thank you. Any motions or questions on this item? Just a quick. Sure, go ahead, Dr. Mahoney. Just a quick question. Could could we just know why we're, what is this in regards to? Um, so in the fiscal year, every fiscal year, there is a position, um, an admin position that is budgeted out of the park department budget. And at that time, when you vote on the park department budget, you also have an offset in there to cover that salary. Okay. So what you're this voting, is, this is the, the director. Excuse me? Is this the director of the CPA? No. Um, it's the administrator. It's the administrator. Okay. It's, it's the director. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you both. Any other questions on this item? Motion to approve. Thank you. We have a motion by Council McCarthy. We have a second. Second. Second by Council DeBona. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. No. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Eight members of passes. Thank you. Number four, please. Number four is 2021-068, an appropriation for $1,283,548 to Community Preservation Historic and Recreation Projects. Thank you. I see Council DeBona has his hand raised. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, just um, before I get into a lot of the uh, logistics of this appropriation, um, I just want to thank um, the other uh, Community Preservation Committee members that I serve with. This has been my sixth year being on the CPC. It's been a, um, a very pleasant and pleasure working with the other members. Um, I want to thank our administrator, uh, Kristen Powers, for all her hard work during this year, especially during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic with doing some on Zoom. We had actually a physical meeting um, back in um, back in November. So um, I also want to thank our chairman, Scott Campbell, our other members, Will Smith, Larry Luzo, and Ellen O'Donnell. Now, our longtime veteran members that have served for over 10 or 15 years, uh, they've been a huge help on the CPC. Their experience and knowledge of prior projects are vital in our decision-making process. Uh, so thank you to the other four members, Connie Driscoll, Tony Ritchie, Laurie Marathas, and John Brennahan. Um, I'm happy to report a group of beautiful projects by many volunteers, nonprofits, and activists that really donate a lot of their many hours to make Quincy a more prosperous city to live in as we do more construction. These folks have come in and done a lot of projects. And this past year, I'm just gonna go through a few of them if I could. Um, 
you know, we did some documented record, uh, records preservation here in the city clerk's office uh, up at City Hall. Some of the churches have come in front of us this past year, Bethany Congregational Church, to do some stonework preservation and repairs. Uh, the Life Community Church has come in front of us for some exterior uh, renovations. Um, we also had um, um, the USS Salem to do some preservation on that, um, which has been, been great. Um, the Veterans Memorial Stadium, um, there needs some, needed to be some work on the stadium wall. The Natural Resources is really um, tailored up on that. The Colonial Dames, with a lot of work that's been done. Obviously, the Adams Academy that's come in front of this, uh, this body just recently. The Seaside Gardeners of Squanum, they do the causeway purification. I know um, Councilor Harris really enjoys that as we go down the causeway into Squanum and to exit that area also with Marina Bay and into North Quincy. Um, there's also um, the Clifford Marshall Elementary School did a first grade butterfly garden and landscape, which was um, um, headed by uh, Principal Ahern. It's been doing a great job in the PTO. Um, the Snug Harbor basketball courts were in disarray, so we're, we're, they've come in front of us. Um, Council McCarthy uh, headed storms that. And a really good project is the, the President's Coast Pedestrian Highway, which is a, a, a floater between P.J. Foley and the Natural Resources Department. And I want to thank Council McCarthy on his help with that as well. And these are some of the items that have come in front of us. And I want to thank my CPC members for really taking the time and going through a lot of these uh, items. And I wanna thank all the, the folks that have come in in front of the board this year. So with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, the 1,283,548 1, to the Community Preservation Historic and Recreational Projects. I put that in the form of a motion. Thank you, Councilor Drummond. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councillor Phelan. I do also see Councillor Pamucci, Councillor Mahoney, and now Councillor McCarthy raising his hand. I'd like to go in that order. Councillor Pamucci. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Devon, I don't mean, if I may, through you, Madam President, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Um, and it's okay if you don't, don't have an answer um, to this. I, you know, just in reviewing it, listening to what you say, I thought of it. Um, otherwise, I would have asked you, uh, you know, outside the meeting. But so there were no applications submitted under the affordable housing category. Um, this year, is that that I don't recall that happening previously. I well, mean, is, what, what was your take on that? As my six years being on the council, it's almost an every other year. Um, yeah. We try to promote, and and what happens is is of of my six years, three have been approved. So it's almost like every other year, the folks come in front of us for affordable housing. NeighborWorks has been a, a front runner with coming in in front of us. They did a winter winter street project last year. Um, we were trying to actually, as you speak about it, Council Palmucci, is trying to get father bills. And um, mm. we mm. obviously um, are trying to, to maybe vie to get them next year in front of us. But on the average, and I know Council Mahoney had spoken about it past, I mean, it's been an every other year. Usually um, some years they we just have to put it back in the bucket because there's no applications. Um, and that's usually how the average goes. Every other year we get one application that comes in front of us. It's also been the Quincy Housing Authority has come in front of us, but this year um, we didn't have any applicants. And you can spend the, um, uh, just looking, because it says the uh, 390,000 transferred from budgetary reserve, 250,000 is transferred from the affordable housing reserve. Um, you can move the money across the different accounts, right? Because it's, it's supposed to be segregated in the three various areas, right? Historic preservation, open space, and affordable housing. It's usually in buckets, but I would defer to- um, Oh, that's Eric okay. No, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. It's, yeah, I'm not, it's not a pop yeah. quiz, trust me. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, and then, so the $9 million, um, the $9 million to the Adams Academy, it was approved, you know, it's noted as approved in this, um, uh, I guess, memo, uh, but it's not coming, it's not, we're not actually voting on the expense of that because we already voted on the bond authorization at the last meeting, right? Like it's not coming yes. out of any money. It's, we've authorized, we've, we've granted authorization for the CPA to seek a bond for that money. So, okay. 
Yes, right, and that's to pay it. it through. And, yes, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank for you, your, Council Your service on that committee, uh, Council Devon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank All you, right, oh, thank Madam you. President. Sorry. Council Mahoney and then Council McCarthy, please. So I just had a quick question too. So I, that, and actually, Council Palmucci just brought it up. So I was just I was just wondering why we weren't we, so we don't have to vote on it the nine million dollars in the CPA monies that are presented tonight. Correct. Through you, Madam I would President. defer that to um, uh, the mayor's representative, Mr. Walker. Through you, Madam President, to Mr. Walker, if I could. Please, thank you. Through you, Council. Yes, that's correct, uh, Council, because it's a separate appropriation order. It does not need to be included in this order. But when the payments of the bonds start to kick in, that's when um, it will be taken out of the out of the CPA monies, correct? Correct. Okay. And then I just had another quick question in regards to, are we going to be voting on this all in one lump sum or do we go through it line item by line item? I'm just curious. Uh, so, sorry, Councilor, insofar as this one appropriation request to the order? Yeah, I'm just asking, because there's, there's, you know, we have the recreation projects and then we have the historic preservation fund, just out of curiosity, are we voting it all in one lump sum or we do it all at once? It's my understanding it would be one lump sum as a vote to the one order that includes all of it. Okay, so I do have one question in regards to the Historic Preservation Fund for 902, item number C. Also, the order is incorrect. I don't know if this matters. In the order, you have G and H listed in the Historic Preservation Fund. I think G was actually, if you go to the backup, and this is just a, this is just really a technicality. The G is actually for the $9 million for the, um, the Adams Academy, and what you have listed on the order G and H is actually H and I. If you're following me so i don't know if that needs to be cleaned up because no, i do and that does matter because we're voting on something and well i thought it did so i thought i'd mention it so um <laughs> that has to be so g g should be actually h and that should be for the forty four thousand seven hundred dollars that's the department of natural resources and currently the h should be i which is the department of natural resources for twenty five thousand dollars because there is no okay Correct. No, I thought um, I thought we had remedied that, but I appreciate that you are having us fix it before we vote on something that's incorrect. So I don't know if um, Madam Madam I President, if I could. Yes, go ahead, Councilor Bonner. I just amendment wise, I I don't know why I even mentioned the Adams Academy. That is a separate vote. So if I could amend to take that out of the language for tonight's vote. Yes, if we could. That I wasn't wasn't I'm pass that you just resend that because, um, I, to my understanding, Councilor Mahoney is making. I suggest an amendment to actually correct this, which would remove the current, if folks are looking at their um, at their paperwork, right? The current, G, yep. yep, if you go to page three, the current language has G as the Adams Academy. I'm sorry, yep, to the, um, for the Adams Academy, but you're looking to remove that, Councilor Devona. But again, right before you just yep. said that, my understanding is Councilor Mahoney is already saying that that should be out of there already. And then um, G should be the 44,700, which is currently listed as H. And then H should be 25,000, which is currently listed as I. Is that right, Council Mahoney? Yes. So there's three corrections. Yep. That you're yep. so, Council Devon, Point of order, you... Madam President. Go ahead, Council Devon. May I just, um, so those are two separate documents. The, the backup, which is the letter um, from uh, Ms. Powers to uh, Mayor Koch, is just a backup explanation of the order. They don't necessarily, we're not approving that letter, which is the backup. We're only approving that order 21-068. So it doesn't actually matter if the if the ordinance um, numbers match up to the backup numbers. You know, I mean, we can change them to, you know, to whatever letters we want in the ordinance, but it they don't necessarily have to correlate between the two because we're not adopting the the memo from Ms. Powers to, to the mayor. And that's fine. I was just Go ahead, Councilor Mahoney. That's okay. That's fine. I, I I just was going from the backup because you know when you're looking at things, I was just trying to follow along. So whatever needs to be done, it's, it's no, no. I appreciate it, and I think um, Councilor Mahoney has a point. Right, we're voting on the order itself and not the supporting documents. But I also see it, it's physically all stapled and all comes in together. And I like to be clean and orderly and keeping things, uh, you know, the way that they're supposed to be. So if we're voting on the ordinance, um, and it includes the supporting document. Um, and Madam Clerk, if you could just clarify for me too, right? If we it, it's part of the order that comes in because it's supporting documents. Can we make those changes as an amendment and then vote it through with the cleaned version? Again, that's just, I, I agree with Councilor Mahoney, right? If you're voting on something, even if it's supporting docs, it should be, you know, clean and, and correct. Yes, we can um, ask 
that um, the administration make that change um, to support the documents um, and make the amendment tonight. Um, but I do agree with Council Palmuji too. We are voting on the order itself, but we can make sure that it's clean and um, the administration resubmits um, a final final order to us. Okay, so then we don't we don't need then like a, a vote to to clean. They can just send us back a clean version. Right? That's right. Okay, so then can we can we hold off on voting on this? I know it sounds you know, some type of way. It's, I would like a clean version. I would like to vote on something that's cl a clean version of something. Certainly, Councilor DeBonner, if you would like to make an amendment um, to change the order of the lettering, sure. we could do that and, and vote on it this evening. Okay. So do you want me to make, um, if I could make an amendment now? And yes. I would like to make an amendment um, based on Council Mahoney's recommendation to change um, G to H and H to I. Is that correct, Mrs. Uh, Council Mahoney? I think so. Yeah. I'd like to make that in a form of a motion to amend um, G, H, and I. Yes. <laughs> and then, Council Mahoney, are you okay seconding that? What's up? Are you okay seconding that? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Madam Point, do we need a roll call for this amendment? Or, no. Can I do a voice vote? We can do a voice vote. Thank you. All those in favor for this correction? Aye. Uh, thank you. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, again, I just, it's just helpful for me to give the habit of the diversion. Uh, Council Mahoney, do you have any other questions on this? I do, actually. Um, I, I asked this last year, and I'm going to ask it again this year, and I do appreciate all the hard work the CPA does, but, you know, if you want to learn anything, basically, there's nothing much on the Quincy the Quincy website that would be able to give you information. But if you go to Boston or Cambridge or pretty much any of the large, the top 10, um, they basically have, um, they, they, they have a whole dedication to the CPA funds, tips on how to do it, what the projects are. Um, see, you can check out the total amount of each project, how they're being funded, how they're being paid for. So you can see with all transparency, really what's happening in the CPA fund. And currently right now, I mean, even when we were talking about the $9 million, you have to do a lot of kind of, checking to see like how much is left and yeah we'll have a couple of hundred thousand dollars left but that's going to really limit us i'm not sure what that's going to do to potentially you know future um future opportunities for for building affordable housing so i do get concerned about that but i do think we need to be a little bit more transparent about how we're spending this money and we're really bonding that out for a really long time so that's one of my concerns i just really really think that this is it's time to actually be more transparent about how we're how we're spending that money and, and, and how it's being bonded and how much is left. So that's just a statement. Then I did have a question in regards to item number C, the one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for the United States Naval Shipbuilding Museum, which I know is the USS Salem, and this is through you to um, to Mr. Walker. Um, I just want some clarification um, on this because I know we're using the CPA monies to to do some work on this, but um, I also know that they're looking to move that ship at some point, someplace, because they don't want it down at the shipyard down there. And there has been speculation that it's going to be going over to the um, over to the marina over by um, by Southern Artery. So, if there's any clarification for that, and how we're going to be able to do that, through you, Madam President, um, I have no knowledge of any plan to at this point. I think you're right, Councillor, that, you know, there's been some discussion relative to ultimately relocating the ship. Uh, it is privately held. Uh, it's in a private space. Mm -hmm. uh, my knowledge, there hasn't been um, any formal plan, any concept relative to moving the ship at this point. Okay. So there's, so the, is the city in the process of acquiring that marina on Southern Artery then? Councillor, I don't know. Okay. Just want that on the record. So... We are, as far as we know, we're not purchasing that land over there. And if we were to be purchasing that land, we would be the, we would be hopefully knowledgeable about that in the city council, correct? Okay, great. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Of course, thank you. Any other questions on this item? Okay, and we had a motion to approve, and I believe we had a second. I got lost in the, the letter changes. Um, 
Can we just confirm who is seconding that motion? Councilor Phelan. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. No. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. No. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Seven members. Thank you. All right, let's move on to number five, please. Number five, 2021-069, an appropriation for 40000 Dollars to Quincy Historical Society Tourism for Hotel Motel Tax Tourism. Thank you. Do we have any questions or motions on this item? Motion to approve. Thank you. Motion to approve by Council Harris. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Council McCarthy. Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Yeah. Moving on to number six, please. 2021-070, an appropriation for $185,693 to tourism from hotel motel tax tourism. Thank you, Council McCarthy. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, earlier today, I received a memo. There were some mathematical errors that I want to just um, correct if I could and amend this. Uh, some of the amounts were off. Uh, Mr. Mason sent it out to Mr. Walker, and I received it late today. Um, so um, in regards to this 185,693 number, um, I'd like to make an amendment. Um, on personnel services, that brings it down $17,441.54. So that brings it down to $88,251.46. Contractual, $25,085.97 would be the reduction, bringing it down to $24,914.03. And the... Um, the last item there, the uh, current expense down 2,824.33, which that brings that number down to 27,175.67. So the number uh, on 2021 is 140,341.16. Just to be um, spot on. So I want to thank Mr. Mason and Mr. Walker for uh, getting that to me. All right, thank you, Council McCarthy. So you're proposing an amendment to change the sum from 185,693 down to $140,341.16, is that correct? Yes, Madam President. Okay, uh, do we have a second on the amendment? Second. Second by Councilor uh, Phelan, thank you. And then uh, Council Hunter, I saw you had your hand raised. Yep, just a quick question. So did we just make an error of the amount or is, there, is that $40,000 gonna come from someplace else? Mr. Mason. Through you, Madam President. Uh, so um, that's not going to come for anywhere else. Due to the COVID pandemic, we uh, had a lot less tourism services, which um, resulted in that reduction in contractual expenses. Okay, just wanted to check. Okay, so so those are true. Those are the true numbers, and the budget for that year was 140. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions on this item or on the amendment? Okay, Madam Clerk, can we just, uh, do we need a roll call on this amendment or do we need, uh, we could do a voice vote? We can do a voice vote on the amendment. Okay, thank you. So all those in favor of accepting the new dollar amount? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so then do we have a motion or questions on the order itself as amended? I don't see any questions, but do we have any motions on the amended order? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Thank you. I got a motion to approve by Councilor Harris, seconded by Councilor McCarthy. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. 
Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. All right. So let's go to number seven, please. 2021-071, an appropriation for $1,660,000 to the Quincy Public Schools and Quincy Access Television from Comcast. Thank you. Any questions, comments, or motions on this item? Anyone going once? Going twice. Motion to approve. Thank you, sir. So motion to approve by Council McCarthy. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Council Tabona. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Council Kane. Yes. Council Dwana. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. We go to number eight, please. 2021-072, an appropriation for 300,000 to Parks Department capital expenditures for a tree offset. Thank you. Any questions or comments on this item? Council Mahoney? Could we just once again I explain what the $300,000 is for? Uh, yes. It, in the FY21 budget, in yep. the park, within the park department, there was a line that is in there for $300,000 for trees. Um, that is covered by an offset that is made out of the open space for um, the hotel motel tax, which is a permissible expense. And what you're doing now is you're voting on the offset that was in the budget to cover that offset. Okay. Could you also current, and there's currently $1.35 million in the account. And that's posted through the beginning of um, June. $1.35 million in the hotel motel account? In the, in the open space portion of that. Open space portion. And what is, the, what is in the total um, hotel motel? Um, it would be the 1.351. And then there was $141,000 in the um, tourism piece. So and you just voted on that yep. in the prior um, order. So there's 1.351. Is, the, is that the total that's in the hotel motel right now is 1.351 or is it? Correct, yes. Okay. okay. And then um, through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Mason, um, are, is, is there plans to use some of the, um, the, the um, COVID money to go into the hotel motel fund? So right now the uh, ARPA money is they're finalizing the guidance for being able to replenish that fund based on the lost revenue during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, yeah. So DLS released a bulletin about 10 days ago outlining it. Um, it's important to remember that ARP, ARPA money for the city of Quincy comes directly from the federal government because we're an entitlement yep. community. So um, the plans are yes to do it, but the calculation was still waiting for final guidance from the treasury. Okay, and then just out of curiosity, because we, because um, we, because I know that we bonded some things out of the hotel motel as well. What, where do we stand on that? I just, I'm just curious. We're good for that. Um, in terms of debt payment, counselor, or uh, future projects. Um, debt or future projects. Okay. Um, to my understanding, there's no future projects pending in front of the council right now that have to do with hotel motel okay. tax. Um, in the current Maybe projects, prior ones or no prior ones either, right? right? Uh, there's some prior there's, ones. Uh, Hancock Adams Green is one of them. Yeah. Uh, I think it's probably the most prominent. Thank you very much. I'd be curious. I'd be, I'd, I would hope that when we do get the final guidance on that, if we could just be kept posted as to how much is going to go into the hotel motel, just to make sure, because you know the concern is is that we didn't have a lot going in there this year. So, thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Mitchell. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, perhaps uh, to Mr. Walker. Um, uh, do we still have a parks department? That's still a thing? I thought everything was wrapped up under the natural resources department. Uh, and second, is it 300,000 for 
planting trees or or removing trees. I don't recall when it was discussed last year, what it was for, if you could refresh my recollection. Through you, Madam President, uh, the park department still exists as a budget line. It's as a, as a department within the budget because the Department of Natural Resources covers uh, three separate departments, uh, park, forestry, cemetery, and, um, and recreation as well. Um, so as a line item, as a budget function, it still exists. Um, okay. Second piece of your question, this is, this is tree planting. Planting. Correct. So, is it, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions on this item? Okay, do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you, Councilor Family. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilor McCarthy. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Council Pelmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Move on to number nine, please. 2021-073, a gift for $10,000 from the Copeland Family Foundation, Inc. for DEAR. Thank you. Council McCarthy? Motion to approve. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Council Andronico. Any questions on this item? Okay, so you know just, that. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Councilor McCarthy. I, I was just going to mention just to send a letter of thanks, uh, President. Absolutely. Thank you. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Let's yeah. go to number 10, please. Number 10 is 2021-074, a resolve for the city council's opposition to Pine Island Boardwalk. Thank you. I'd like to recognize Councilor Phelan, and then I think Councilor Devona also had his hand raised. Councilor Phelan? Thank you, Madam President. Um, I, did, I brought this in because back in 2017, the city voted on overall plan for uh, Marymount Park. And in that plan was several different, several different things. And one of them was for a boardwalk to go from the boathouse over to the, um, over to the, over to Pine Island. And as things went on and EPA, I, this thing kind of went quiet for several years, obviously, the pandemic and everything. And then recently, after coming on to the city council, I was made aware by some neighbors that this was an issue that was on. And then I was made aware that it was going before the state EPA. And at that time I went and listened to the necessary documents and everything and uh, talked with a lot of neighbors, people who live in my area, particularly the group Making Waves and all that. And we met, we talked several times on these issues. And one of the things we came down with was there's no, no question that they're doing it. Even when they were talking to the state EPA, they were saying, well, we're trying to mitigate the damage. No one's saying there's not going to be damage. And at that time, it then went before the Conservation Commission, and I went with several of the neighbors in the area, and we went to speak in opposition to this. I think we have a valuable salt marsh in the, in the, in the Blacks Creek area. Recently in Broad Meadows, we just spent millions of dollars reestablishing a salt marsh which we have in abundance. Um, actually, I can look out, out my window right at it now. That is right across, that, that is Blacks Creek, that whole Black, Blacks Creek Basin. There are a lot of wildlife in there that some of them are endangered species that aren't around much places. And one of the reasons they're there is because the, the, the area is alive, it's well. It's uh, the, the osprey eagles, the piping plovers that you see on the beach, you see them fishing all along all along the creek. So these are these are animals that aren't around a lot in a lot of places. They're endangered, they're endangered species that are here, and it, it speaks well to the health of Black's Creek. What I'm worried about is putting putting a, a, a 60 66 
tiles, a 400, a 450 foot long bridge with 66 piles that are going to be driven into a pristine salt marsh that are going to cause irreparable damage. Currently, Pine Island, I walked out there the last week just to take a look at it. Again, just to familiarize myself with it. Pine Island is one of the last untouched and undeveloped areas here in Quincy. It is home of several wildlife species. Again, a lot that I know I've not seen around much anymore. And I just feel after talking with a lot of neighbors, it's going off a plan that was done several years ago. And in that plan, you go back to the 130 years ago when that plan was done, this area, Beachwood Knoll, was a, was a, was a farm. The other areas were total woodlands and not developed yet, going off of Fennel Street. So I received a lot of comments, a lot of emails. I know as a lot of the other councilors, and I thank my other councilors for joining on this. But at a conservation commission, I was told, well, you guys voted for it. And I just think that there's so much in that plan. I don't know if anyone totally realized what they were voting on. So I wanted to bring this in. We are going to be before the Conservation Commission on July 7th, and they're going to continue public hearing. But I wanted to bring this in just to ask my fellow councilors that I think this is not, is not something good to happen, and it will do irreparable damage to the salt marsh. And I wanted to go on record, and I thank all the other councils for joining on this, to be in opposition to this, to say that we don't want this to happen. I don't think it does anything good for people. There also could be problems where if the bridge is open, you put a big gate on it so people don't get out there. You're giving a very easy way for kids to be going out there when now they can't get out there when the tides are right. When the, when the tide gates are working properly, you can't get out there because if the marsh is flooded, you can't get there. When the tide gates are off, yeah, they are down, yeah, then it's a current low tide and you can't get out there. But I just wanted to uh, be recorded and put my name in opposition to this. And I thank all the other councils for joining on. And uh, I, would, I would request a vote, a vote on this tonight. I would also request that it be put in the Park and Rec Committee. So in case in the future, it needs to be brought out at any time when, when this comes up. Uh, so thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor Phelan. So you'd also like to make a motion to approve. Am I hearing you correctly? I would make a motion to approve and also send to the Park and Rec Thank okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Council Devona. And Council Devona, you also wanted to speak, correct? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. I want to thank uh, Council Fanlin for bringing this about. I'm happy to sponsor this with him. Um, I talked with him um, a few days ago and just in general. And whenever I get an overabundance of emails as an at-large counselor, I know that there's a red flag that goes up. And that red flag uh, with the folks that were concerned, not only abutting that area, but all throughout the city. Um, the main concern that the folks gave me on via email or whether they called me or text me was it was concerned with the chemicals from the wood to build the bridge. They were concerned with the ecosystem for food and life for animals. And they basically wanted to preserve the environment and not cut down healthy trees in the process. Um, I have, to, you know, when folks reach out to me, I have to make a judgment based on, um, you know, what, how they support that and what they're putting in the emails and what, there's, um, what they're basically behind. And I, I, I'd have to agree with them. Um, so with that being said, I'm happy to support this. And I hope um, that um, the administration would, would look into um, this further down the road as well as July 7th um, um, meeting coming up. So with that, I'm happy to support this and uh, with this measure. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. So we do have a motion to approve as well as a second. Do we have any other questions or comments from my colleagues on this item? Council Mahoney. Just a quick question. I, I know this, I think this was approved in 2017 and it was either a capital improvement budget or a, it was for um, Marymount Park. And I mean, um, I'm not sure if Auditor um, Connor, if Susan O'Connor could tell us what that was budget for and how much has been spent, that would be helpful. Um, one minute, Councilor. Are you talking about the Marymount Park Master Plan? I believe it was out of that, yep. It was part so, of that. Okay, part so um, there was $2,400,000 million, $2 million budgeted um, out of the Marymount Park Master Plan. 
Um, all I can tell you at this time that there was 1,540,513 spent out of that. I do not have the breakdown in front of me to uh, make sure that that was all spent on that particular um, okay. the Pine Island Boardwalk. That's okay. I guess and then, thank you very much. I really appreciate that breakdown. And then um, through another chair to, um, to Mr. Walker, um, just out of curiosity, I believe that they would have to, to be able to even build this island, that, I mean, build this bridge. Would we have to come back for another appropriation? I can't imagine they could build a bridge. I'm just curious to know what the next steps are for this. Yeah, through, through you, Madam President. Yes, Councillor. Um, there is no appropriation or funding source for the actual construction of the bridge. The uh, funding approved by the body in 2017 for the Marymount Park Master Plan uh, was entirely uh, for the design, permitting, uh, and scoping of the project. There are a lot of components to it, uh, uh -huh. and the construction of various elements of it were not included as part of that 2017 funding request. Thank you. Um, I just I just know that there's been, I mean, I appreciate Councillor joining this with um, Councillor Phelan. I just know that there's been a, a large outcry about this. So I would hope that um, the administration is listening to what people are asking for. Maybe we could put, uh, uh, maybe stop this project. So I'm not sure if it's something that's gonna benefit, but you know, that's just my two cents. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Any other questions or comments from my colleagues? Okay, before we go to vote, I just want to thank Councilor Family for extending the invitation um, to all of us to be able to support this measure. I do see, as you had mentioned, Councilor, a number of residents, I believe in your ward, as well as across the city, uh, were actually joining this evening. Although there's no room for public comment, you know, their, their outreach, I think, up until this point, um, clearly has made a difference. So thank you, Councilor Phelan, uh, for bringing this to us. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. So the item passes. All right. Could we go to number 11, please, Madam Clerk? Number 11 is 2021-075, a resolve veterans tax credit program. Thank you. I'd like to recognize Councilor DeBona. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I was looking on the back and I, I want to thank Jen Manning for, for allowing me to look. We Back in 2016, uh, my first year of being on the city council, we did a senior citizens tax credit program. Council Palmucci was head of that and was happy to support that. Uh, um, and I was thinking about more on the lines of the veterans and helping them out with a tax credit program. This basically is um, for folks for that are veterans over the age of 18 years or older can work in the community on a volunteer or part-time ba basis in various work duties and positions in the city of Quincy. Um, obviously, we're, I would like to put this in front of the administration for uh, you know uh, per hour and how many hours worked um, on a fiscal year basis. And a veteran can receive up to $1,500 as a residential tax credit. Now, I didn't put in the language where the funding source would come from. I would like to see it come out of the uh, developers' funds. Um, when the folks come in and develop in the city, and there's a fund that goes towards it. Uh, maybe the folks, uh, veterans, can work off of that. Um, so, therefore, let it be resolved that the city, uh, Quincy City Council, work with the mayor and the Veteran Service Department to establish, develop, and monitor a veterans' residential work tax credit program in the city of Quincy. Um, I'd like to also put this in the veterans services um, committee as well. And if I can get a, a positive recommendation or a vote on this tonight um, to move this forward. Um, and with that, I'd like to make the motion to approve. Okay, so we have a motion to approve to move this, uh, sorry, to approve and to move it to the veterans committee. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Harris. Any questions or comments on this item? Okay, seeing none, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Yes, the item passes and will also be moved to the Veterans Committee. Number thank 12. You, of course, thank you. Madam, uh, number 12, please, Madam Clerk. 
number 12, 2021-076, a resolve. City Council opposition to House Bill 3863, an act relative to re-precincting. Thank you. I'd like to recognize Council Pamucci. Uh, thank you. I, I'm not sure if um, my colleagues are aware that there's this um, legislation pending. It's gotten some um, some news coverage, but there's some legislation pending uh, at uh, on Beacon Hill that would essentially strip this body of its authority to uh, draw the redistricting lines based on the, uh, the, the, the census that occurs every 10 years. Um, I, I've been on, I was on the council the last time uh, that we did this. It's actually a very open and straightforward process. It's something that the clerk works on. Uh, I believe last time, I, I believe we had a consultant to, to help uh, adjust the numbers. And really all that does is we take into the, we take into account the local uh, changes in demographics in terms of population. Uh, 10 years ago, I, I, I just remember my ward specifically, Ward 4, um, we, Ward 4 gained an area up on Penn's Hill and it lost an area over in, um, in Brewer's Corner. Uh, and that went to Ward 5. And, I think from the Penn's Hill area, uh, the Penn's Hill area was in Ward 2. Um, so uh, depending on where there's been development or where there's been population shift, our ward <laughs> and precinct districts, uh, well, our wards and precincts um, need, to, need to change to account for that so that there's uh, a kind of a stable number of folks that, that we represent. So um, unfortunately, this bill essentially would strip us of that authority to redraw the lines and give it to the state legislature. And while I have the utmost trust and respect for our, our uh, four legislators, the, the three in the House and, and the one in the Senate, um, I, I can't say the same for, as far as trust, I can't say that I trust uh, the other hundreds of members of the legislature to know what's best for Quincy, what's best for Ward 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, five and six um, uh, to know where those lines should be drawn. I, I just think that this is something that um, is really a bad idea. Uh, government's always best at the, the, the lowest, most local level. And I think allowing the, the, and it's not just us, it's obviously not just Quincy, it's every municipality, but I think the municipality should um, have the authority and continue to have the authority that we've had for quite some time to set those uh, district boundaries. Um, so I, I'd ask my colleagues to support this. Uh, I'm sure the uh, Madam Clerk can speak more if anyone has any questions uh, about the logistics of um, the census and how it how it um, how it plays an impact. And, and I know the argument that the um, that the the representatives who brought this in are saying is that because the, the census was late, um, the results from the census are late, and they and they are late uh, that they need to do this. But I but that doesn't seem to carry water. Um, and I know many other municipalities are have similar resolutions before them um, and are taking similar actions to what I'm suggesting we take tonight, which is to send a clear message that, um, that municipalities, local municipalities, elected officials in those municipalities should retain the authority to set these, these boundaries. So I'd ask that uh, I'd move for, uh, for approval and um, if it passes, to send it to our congressional, uh, to our uh, state delegation. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve by Council Pamunchi. Do we have a second? Second by Bill Harris. Second by Council Harris. And I do see that you're also co-sponsoring this, Council Harris. Did you want to? Do you have any questions or comments on this item? Uh, yes, I just say that um, I, I I feel the same way that uh, Council Palmucci, um, uh feels. Uh, having uh, I really I could really speak to it better probably two years from now when I'm not in my job. But as far as the census is concerned and, and, uh, and folks that, the fact that we're not gonna have the control that is needed, uh, that it, it's really important that we do send a message that, you know, that, you know that the city, uh, uh, we should have at least a say in the matter of what's, what's going on. So uh, again, I, I support this 100%. Thank you. Thank Madam. you, Councilor Harris. Councilor Phelan, I see your hand raised, and Councilor Mahoney, I believe I saw your hand raised as well. So we'll go to Councilor Phelan first. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just, through you, I just wanted to uh, thank Councilor Pamucci for bringing this in. I think it's a good bill. 
I had a unique experience where for three years I worked on the census helping to put it together. And uh, where streets are, where things go, it's it's very difficult. And somebody who's not familiar with, with the city, its neighborhoods, lots of things can happen. Technically in these neighborhoods, you don't have to work. The state and the federal government don't worry where the city councils are or where certain boundaries are or where certain things are. And several times I can remember going to the Secretary of State's office, having to change some things with, at that time it was clerk Joe Shea. I know Nikki was there as the assistant clerk a couple of times. And it's a very, it's a very complicated process. It's much simpler on the computer where the lines, the census lines are drawn. And we get those lines right from the right from the feds, and they come right from the census. And we have to draw those lines. But looking at those lines, it's very important to have some local input to actually change these. So I I am going to be voting in favor, and I agree with the the uh, the thing. I think it's much better. In the end, both the state and the federal government still have the oversight over this. We send a we send a, a what what we do back, and they still have to review it and have to approve it. So it's just not the city doing it in a vacuum. We're doing it by all the laws, by everything that's mandated by both the state and federal government. So um, so I would I would uh, support this and uh, I plan on voting yes on it. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. I see Council Mahoney, then Council Pamucci and Council Devona. Uh, um, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, Council Pamucci, I, I just want to thank you for bringing this in as well. I, I, I apologize that I didn't actually, I didn't, I should have joined on to this, but this is definitely something that um, we should have um, control over here at the local level. I do remember when they, they, when this was all done before, it's hard, it's hard enough to, to remember where the lines are, but when we don't actually get to draw them and make sure that people are being represented in a correct way and that we do that in the local, in the local government, it's important that we have that kind of control. So I do, I'm very much in support of this and thank you very much for bringing it in. Thank you, Councillor Pamucci and then Councillor DeBono. I just wanted to add, the um, Council of Finland's right. It, it's not as if um, they, the, the state legislature doesn't have oversight over it. They have to approve our maps. And, and the clerk works um, hand in hand with the, um, the clerks across the state work hand in hand with the Secretary of State's office. I just wanted to add one, one thing about the, the last redistricting uh, 10 years ago. I, I recall there was an issue with, um, uh, with a particular apartment building, a senior housing building. Um, in, in Ward 4 that was getting redistricted out, whereas they, it's the Bauer House. They, 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 would, they vote at um, the Lincoln Hancock across the street. They were being redistricted out where they would have to uh, vote uh, somewhere else, but not across the street. And the folks spoke up. They sent all of us, uh, all the members of the council at the time, emails, letters they called. And we ended up um, working with uh, Clerk Joe Shea and he redrew the, the lines because that didn't make a lot of sense, right? So there's a human element here that we understand a lot better at the local level than what I expect uh, the full uh, legislative uh, bodies up at uh, Beacon Hill to understand. So um, I just wanted to add that and, and thank Council Family for pointing out that um, the state will still retain uh, authority over our decisions to approve them or not. Thank you. Council Devona? Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Um, just on the level, uh, on the lines of which Council Pamucci just spoke about, I don't want to get in, as an at-large council, I don't want to get into the redistricting of the wards. However, I can speak about the redistricting of the precincts within those wards. Um, there are many throughout the city of Quincy that folks that live right across the street from a voting poll or, or, or a school that we vote in that have to go to a different precinct to vote. Um, it, it just it just mind boggles me sometimes um, throughout the city of Quincy. Um, I know, uh, you know, they have to be redistricted to certain areas for population. I understand that. But we've talked about this in front of the city council previously before about making voting voting easier for folks, not harder. And I can name uh, about four or five places that are right across from schools that have to go. Uh, get in their car and actually drive to another polling place just to vote on election day. And I know Council Pamucci has been real strong on making voting rights a lot easier, whether it be by mail or or this situation. But I know folks that 
that live across the street from a particular school that's a voting poll that have to go and get in their car and vote somewhere else. It, it's kind of kind of weird when I think about it throughout the city. And I don't want to get into the precincts because I don't want to get over uh, and talk about each ward per ward counselor. But I can I, I, I have a few in my head that you guys can think of, which I, I, they can't. They, they, and when I go and talk to these folks, some of them are, are precinct wardens and they're like, yeah, I actually am, I live across the street. I'm a precinct warden here, but I have to get up in my car at break and go down and, and, and actually vote somewhere else. And I, I would like to see, obviously, if we have any say in that for the future, to make sure that these lines are uh, better uh, for the ability of folks to vote. So with that, I'm happy to support this. And um, I'm happy we had a conversation about this today. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else has any other questions or comments on this item? Uh, I had a, a quick uh, question and then followed up by a comment, if I could. So. Um, I appreciate Council Pimage that you're bringing this to us and having an understanding. Uh, this is the first time I've been in elected office where we are doing, you know, a census as well as now uh, redistricting. And so um, if I could to Madam Clerk, just to clarify the process of what happens, right? When we get the census, we understand, you know, locally what we do to redistrict here impacts the wards directly, right? So in the past and traditionally that's what happens. We redistrict here in the city and the local level and then the state after the fact would take that information to help determine the redistricting for federal level seats. Is that correct? Yes, it is. And we have been working with uh, the state, uh, Secretary Galvin's office um, to start our redistricting process. Council Palmucci is correct. The, the numbers are late this year. However, um, there is, the element of knowing your city and knowing your neighborhoods. And um, we are a growing city and we take that into consideration. Uh, we're looking at perhaps, you know, based upon the numbers, we may have to add precincts um, in the future, in the near future. And that being said, we want to be sure that the new people that are moving in um, are, are accommodated as well as, you know, the people that have been voting. Um, sometimes, unfortunately, a, a little far away from their house, um, answering to um, Councillor Dubon's um, concern, somebody unfortunately has to be on the edge of the precincts. And, um, you know, we will look to rectify all we can, but that, that important aspect of it does happen at the local level. So we will take that into consideration. Um, but if it flips and, and um, the legislature, uh, legislators draw the lines, um, then I don't know where we stand because we've never done it this way before. And so far, we have gotten no comment on what our role as a local government will be. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. I think, um, and then this is the, the, the piece that I wanted to comment on. Um, you know, I, I think you're absolutely right, right? At the end of the day, we all, all of us, we, we know the city the best, right? Um, and, you know, to your credit, Madam Clerk, I mean, for the last two years, it hasn't just been the 2020 census. I mean, you've been doing this work and prepping for it, particularly for this year's census during a pandemic, you know, early in 2019, if not even the end of 2018, I remember you were having conversations about, you came to us, we talked through it with you as far as funding the, the process and funding the work, right? We talked about, you know, what's going to happen during the elections themselves and making sure that, you know, given the pandemic, we are making any adjustments that we need to. In my five years on the council, every time you come to us and bring us information about where the elections are gonna be held, um, the different polling locations, right? And the funding that needs to happen for all of it, you know, it's an incredibly thorough process that you work incredibly diligently with folks in the elections office, as well as bringing us into that process um, to make sure, right, that folks are able to vote in the areas that they live in, um, that they understand where their districts and voting locations are, and that we understand as well. So it's, you know, it's a process that has been established and one that I think you've been executing exceptionally well um, by bringing everyone into that process with you. And it is a very upsetting to me personally to, to, you know, when I was looking through this and understanding that this process could potentially be taking out of, um, 
you know, out of what has been traditionally done, and I think done well, simply because of, of the delay, right, one that you are managing, right, I, I, between elections and census, you know, there hasn't been a time in the pandemic, and then running the council meetings, right, that you've ever dropped the ball on that, I know you're on top of it, we've, you're the president of the clerks in the state, for crying out loud, right, there's a reason for that appointment, uh, for the position you hold, and so, you know, to Council Pemucci's earlier point, um, the elected, you know, state officials here in the state, or, or sorry, here in Quincy, are ones that I think we all can say that we admire and respect very much. Um, the folks in leadership at the, at the House, I admire and respect very much. I'm, you know, I'm confused as to why there wasn't more of a conversation and engaging yourself as president of the, the clerks here in the state or other city clerks on what we can do to make this process move forward, you know, faster given the delays, but making sure to still include us in that process. And it's that inclusion piece um, that's clearly being intercepted here that is, is cause for concern for me. So, you know, I, I appreciate Council Family for bringing this to our attention. It is deeply important that we, again, are part of this process on the local level, right? It determines who your ward councillors are. It determines, again, moving back up to the state level, who your, you know, elected congressional, uh, both Congress and Senate, you know, it's just, it, it has such a huge impact. And so to be completely, again, intercepted in that process, um, I think is really concerning. And you know, Madam Clerk, I know that you're going to be on top of this. I look forward to hearing what's going to happen. I believe, again, from what we talked earlier, my understanding is it passed the House, but is now currently waiting um, for any revisions or passage in the Senate. And so there's still an opportunity for us to, you know, let them know our concerns about this and uh, concern about changing the process. So I appreciate it, Madam Clerk. And I, again, we can go to a roll call. I just want to do one last round and make sure that there aren't any other questions or comments from any of my other colleagues. Councilor Andronico? Thank you, President Liang. Uh, just before the vote tonight, I, I just wanted to say thank you to my colleagues. Uh, but outside of that, given my day job up in the state Senate, uh, I will need to abstain from the vote, even though this is a House bill. Uh, and I just wanted to clarify that for my colleagues and the folks at home. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions or comments? Last call. Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Yes, Councillor Kane. Yes. Councillor DeBona. Sorry, Madam Clerk, I believe he's muted. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Eight members. The item passes. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and move to the approval of the previous meeting minutes. Uh, can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Council McCarthy. Second. Second. Second, my counselor, family. Any questions or comments on the meeting minutes? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So we'll accept the meeting minutes from June 7th. Communications and reports from the mayor, other city officers, and city boards. Okay, seeing none, unfinished business and proceeding meeting. All right, seeing none, reports of committees. We have quite a few. I'm going to start with you, Madam Chair, and Ordinance Committee, if I could. Great. Thank you very much, um, Madam President. Um, tonight we had several um, ordinances that we met with earlier today and had two public hearings, um, and we have a motion to um, approve 2021-054 um, ordinance amendment to the Municipal Code, Chapter 300, Article 2, Stormwater Management and District, 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 District Ordinance, and we have a positive recommendation. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Seconded by Council McCarthy. Any questions or comments on this item? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor King. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Next was 2021-055 ordinance amendment to zoning code section 8.0 special districts, 8.1 floodplain overlay district. And we have a um, uh, motion to approve. Thank you, motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Council McCarthy. Any questions or comments on this? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. 
Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Next on the agenda is 2021-063, Ordinance of Acceptance of General James C. McConville Way. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Phelan. Any questions or comments on this item? Okay. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Pelmucci. Yes. Council Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. And then we have 2021-064, Ordinance Acceptance of General Joseph F. Dumfort Drive. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Phelan. Any questions or comments on this item? Could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Nine members. Thank you. Any others, Madam Chair? No, that's it. Sorry about that. No, no worries. Next, I'll go to uh, Chairman McCarthy for finance. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, on uh, June 14th, Monday, we had a, um, a meeting of the Finance Committee. I have three items that I'd like to move. Uh, the first item, 2021-038, the appropriation for $475 million to fund all or a portion of the unfunded pension liability of the retirement system of the city of Quincy. During that meeting, we made some amendments to that. So it really reads officially be ordained that $475 million is appropriated for the purpose to investment in PRIM of funding all or a portion of the unfunded pension liability of the retirement system of the city of Quincy, including the payment of any and all costs incidental and related thereto for a period of no longer than 20 years. That is what the um, appropriation reads. So I'd like to move uh, for approval if I could. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Council Pamucci. Any questions or comments on this item? Mr. Walker, I believe you had something and then I do see Council Pamucci and then Council Mahoney and then Councilor Phelan. Thank you, Madam President. I, I, I did. Um, subsequent to the Finance Committee's positive recommendation uh, last week, a uh, conversation was had with Bond Council. Uh, he's Generally, uh, the, the order is in good good standing. He had no major issues with it. He did raise a bit of a concern um, with the tightness of the language around uh, the 20 year term. Uh, he felt that it could constrict uh, the city uh, in a number of ways. You know, for example, if the city was negotiating, uh, it could, the best deal for the city could be 21 years, could be 22 years, could be 24 years. Um, he felt that that um, was perhaps a little bit too tight. So he suggested that if there was a way for uh, the body uh, to keep the intent uh, that it delivered based upon the 20 years, but provide uh, a measure of flexibility uh, in it as well, uh, that would protect the city and protect the city at the negotiating table um, and let the market uh, do its work to some degree. The, he did raise a concern that perhaps when we were negotiating these agreements, these, these, these deals, that uh, keeping it that tight, strictly a 20 year uh, bond could uh, implicate the city and perhaps lead us not to get the best deal possible. Uh, so he made the suggestion that if the body was willing, uh, if there was some way we could find a way to find that language that sort of strikes the balance between the two things. Thank you for the update, Mr. Walker. Let me go through my colleagues first and then we can come back to that. Councillor Pamucci and then Councillor Mahoney and Councillor Phelan. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just, uh, I, you know, I support the, the pension bond. A lot has been said over the last several weeks. 
about this. And um, for me, I, I'm supporting it because I think ultimately it saves us it saves us money in the long run. Now, the downside or the, uh, I don't know, the risk involved is that we're essentially covering, we're covering the losses or rather the, the lack of returns that we've had over the past years. And that this, this um, simply bails that out without fixing structurally any of the, the issues that led to that. I think for me, um, one, we, we have to pay it no matter what. So regardless of how it occurred, we have to pay it. It's a bill that we have to pay. And every year it's going up in the budget. I've been, you know, over the past 10 years, I've seen the, the number steadily increase and increase and take up more and more of our, of our annual budget. And it's a number that is not something that we can uh, predict uh, with any, uh, any certainty. So for me, it's, um, this is about one, saving money because we're able to borrow uh, to pay the entire amount off and then also stabilize and have it be a fixed cost, right? So the risk, the risk is that uh, the, the pension system goes on and it doesn't achieve the returns necessary to fund the pension system. Well, regardless of whether or not we approve this bond, that risk remains for future months. What we're talking about is past months. And for me, the, you know, the, the, I was supportive of this, but really the, the thing that um, I think is, uh, I don't know, most telling about this and, and, and um, really, really bolsters the argument for it is that the fact that we're going to invest this money with PRIM, who is, you know, a top three pensions, pension system uh, in, this, in, the, in the country. You know, they're, they're the best of the best, certainly the best in the state. So putting our money, uh, whether it's bonded money or whether it's the money we pay in on an annual basis with PRIM, I think will, uh, will give us the best chance for our successful returns. Um, and, and, you know, therefore I'm supportive of it. I, I also uh, appreciated the sentiment and, and uh, expressed at our last meeting, whatever that was a week or two ago, about um, the 20 years versus the 30 year borrowing period. Uh, I voted for the amendment that, that restricted it to 20 years. Um, I think that's I think that's a good idea. The, the the sentiment is made clear that this body wants to see that that money. Um, we don't want to see that that money that repayment period stretched out over a long long period of time because we don't want to put that push that burden uh, an additional ten years out into the future. The difference between twenty and thirty. However, I also don't want to tie the city's hands uh, unnecessarily. If our our bond advisors that essentially the experts that we pay to give us advice because none of us are bond analysts. Um, uh, if they're saying that, that this unnecessarily ties the city's hands and that we may be able to achieve better results uh, by simply having the flexibility uh, to, to, to put a bond out there for between 20 and 30 years, then I think that's something we should probably um, listen to. And, and I still think we can achieve both. And uh, Madam President, I'd offer an amendment um, adding in uh, the following sentence after paragraph one before paragraph two that states, for a period of 20 years or such longer term as not to exceed 30 years following consultation with the Executive Office of Administration and Finance. Uh, and essentially what that says is we want it to be 20 years. However, it can't be 30 years and it can only be more than 20 years if the administration um, is, in, is working in consultation with the, um, the state executive office of administration and finance, so the A and F, uh, the governor's um, the governor's uh, department, you know, cabinet level. So I, I again just to clarify for the clerk, um, the the amendment I'd offer is adding the sentence between paragraph one and two for a period of twenty years or such longer term as to not exceed thirty years following consultation with the executive office of administration and finance. And I believe that uh, that um, strikes a balance between what bond uh, advisors are saying as, as well as what the sentiment of the body is. Okay, thank you, Councilor Mushi. So we do have a motion to approve, but now we also have this um, amendment that I would like to make sure we vote on before we move forward. So this amendment is provided by Councilor Pamushi. Do we have a second? 
seconded by Councilor McCarthy. And then before we even go to a vote on that, I do want to make sure to recognize Councilor Mahoney and Councilor Phelan, who is waiting to speak. So Councilor Mahoney, we'll go to you first. Oh, let me just unmute you, Councilor Mahoney. Apologies. Here we go. Are you taking a vote on the amendment or are we taking a full vote? This is what I want to know before we start. Right now we're taking a vote on the amendment, but I wanted to make sure to recognize the both of you since you were waiting. Yeah, I would, I would, you can go ahead and do the vote. I, I'm not in agreement with it, so I'll just be saying no to the vote. So, um, yeah, so no, you can go ahead and vote. Okay, and then I'll make sure to come back to you. Thank you, Councilor yep. Mahoney. Councilor Phelan, did you want to vote on the amendment and then come back to you as well? Yes, uh, but could I, I'd like to say something for us, uh, Madam, Madam President. Um, I, want to, I want to make it clear that um, the last meeting, I was in the meeting, but I did not participate. At that time, the last two meetings, I had put a letter into the solicitor's office to seek an opinion where I get a check from the retirement board on whether whether or not it was within state law for me to vote on it. I, on Friday, I received an opinion from, from the solicitor's office, and I have... Where I am not, where this will not affect, my pension is my pension, and I'm gonna make what I make for the rest of the time I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a pension. So where it does not affect, I got the state, state says that it, it, I, I can vote on it. So I was advised to recuse myself, but I sat in on every meeting, listened to all the debate, and, and was part of the debate. No, I was not part of the debate, and that's the reason why. Um, so I will be voting on this tonight, and I just wanted to make it clear, and I will also be voting yes on the amendment. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you so Madam much. President, can, yes, can I just ask a clarification? Mm -hmm. um, if I could, um, when did you receive the, the written the response, Councilor Phelan? Do you don't mind uh, me asking? On Friday. On Friday, and when did you request it? Um, I sent an email back maybe almost right before the first meeting on this, um, which was in late May. And was it the state that gave you the response or who gave it you the response? When you send a response in to the ethics, it goes through the solicitor's office. That's part of the law. Okay. And that's what I did. Any other questions, uh, go to uh, solicitor Timmons. Thank you very much. Thank you both so much. Okay, any other questions or comments before we go to the vote on the amendment that's being offered? Okay, seeing none, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll on the amendment, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Present. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. No. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Uh, Council of Phelan, sorry. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Seven members. Okay, so the amendment now has passed. And so now there is a motion. Uh, let me just go back and just confirm, Council McCarthy, you're okay with uh, the motion to move forward with this amendment, correct? Yes, Madam President. Okay, and I believe we had a second as well, correct, Madam Clerk? Yes, um, seconded by Council Palmucci. Thank you. And now I'd like to reopen it back up to um, any questions or comments on the amended version. Um, Council Mahoney, do you want me to come back to you on that? Yeah, that's fine. Um, I just had a quick question. So the last meeting that we had, I did ask for some clarification of the $445 million that was in the Stone report to find out whether or not that included Quincy College and Quincy Housing. I believe um, Mr. Mason said it did not include it. So I don't know if it's Mr. Mason. I just want to know, does the, does the bond include Quincy College and Quincy Housing Authority. When I was asking those questions, I was told no, so I just like clarification. Um, the, uh, I believe what I said last time was, and this has been true the entire time, the bond includes Quincy College, and it includes the city of Quincy. So it does not qu include Quincy Housing Authority? No, because they're not a uh, city agency. Okay, and then through you, Madam Chair, to, um, to um, Susan O'Connor. Susan O'Connor, can you confirm that? Because you're on the board, you're on the, the retirement board. Uh, yes, Councillor. So I believe on the last uh, most recent actuarial that the board voted on, the unfunded pension liability was 
projected to be $445 million. And that was as of July of 2021. That 400, it's my understanding that that $445 million does include Quincy Housing Authority, the city of Quincy, and the uh, and Quincy College. So this is one of the reasons, and it's a real problem I'm having, that our chief financial officer is telling me one thing and the, book, the report, the Stone report is telling me another. We're bonding and now we're gonna to go to 30 years and we're, you know, we're not even accurate about what we're doing. And that is, I, Mr. Mason, I gave you a chance to actually say that. And, and it's, it's just, it's just comforting. I don't need you to answer because Susan O'Connor just did. So I'm all set with that. I have, but I do have another question. I do have another question. So the other thing that we had is, um, and you know, we're, we're, are we keeping, I just want to make sure in the, in the revised, are you keeping, are you keeping prim as the investment arm? Uh, to my knowledge, uh, the removal of that was not part of the amendment. So, uh, yes. so I'm going to go back to the structural problems that I have with, in particular, that the Quincy Retirement Board. And this, this, this information was provided to us by the administration, but we also got a memo today from Makita, which was in the 11th hour, which I, I just don't, you know, that's that's problematic as well. But if we're going to be having this kind of tip for chat, that's something that should be worked out between Makita and Prim because they're accusing each other of things now. But more importantly, there was a there was also a contract that was signed. And the contract, the original contract, went through to 2026, and then in February there was a new contract that was created with new language that goes through to 2028. Yet the administration didn't know anything about that happening. And then just today, just today, in the Boston Globe, the MBTA Police Pension Fund was brought up by the um, I think it was the attorney, the Inspector General's um, was brought up because they were having um, lack of transparency and lack of um, in, in structural problems, and they actually overpaid their retirees by over, uh, I think it was $100 million of um, money that went there. So when we don't have good foundations to things, and when we don't know how we're going to invest things, there is huge risk in what we're doing. And to suggest the bond council, this is, this is a question, actually. We just kept saying bond council, he said this, he said that. Who is he, and do we have it in writing from the bond council that they want us to go to 30 years? Thank you. I'm going to defer to Mr. Walker on that since he had just spoken on the uh, uh -huh. Mr. Walker, if you could clarify uh, who you're referring to when you said he from Bond Council. And, and do we have it in writing? Correct. Thank you. Through you, Madam President. Um, he is Rick Manley of Lock Lord. He's our longtime uh, Bond Council. Uh, he's very uh, in tune with these issues. Um, we did not seek nor uh, get anything in writing because he offered an opinion uh, to the solicitor and to myself, mm -hmm. uh, and we're relaying that opinion. It's not something um, formalized. It's not something that is black and white that needs to be, you know, written into general code or anything like that. He offered his two cents. We happen to agree with that. Um, and well, of course you do. <laughs> okay. Oops. Okay. Mr. Walker, do you have anything else or, or Council Mahoney, did you want to move on? Nope. No, I actually, there's one, there's just one other thing. And you're, in regards to, I just want to just, I just really want to explain something, maybe just, just so I can get this off my chest. But, um, you know, we're referring, we all, there seems to be this idea that we're referring the idea that we're refinancing the pension and we're going out 30 years and it's going to be, it is going to be definitely a lesser amount that we'll have to pay per year but it's gonna actually be also a lesser savings the taxpayers will have. And we are potentially creating, this is where the risk comes in, potentially, it's not potentially, we're definitely going to be creating a second unfunded liability. And that to me is just incredibly irresponsible. And the fact of the matter is, is that this project was put in front of us, this initiative was put in front of us, only two meetings we discussed it. And at the last meeting, two thirds of the vote would have lost, this would have lost, but now in the, in the 11th hour, the game has changed. And that's what Quincy does best is changing the game. And it's disturbing to me. The optics look terrible. And I know that, you know, many of you do not care about the optics. You think many people aren't paying attention, but they are. And it's really disturbing to me. You know, we couldn't get Quincy College passed. So we took that out of our hands. And now we're going to spend pandemic money to buy a building. And we couldn't get this passed. So in the 11th hour, all of a sudden, now we can have other counselors can come up and vote. So it's, it's just everything about this is just, it's really 
it's disrespectful to this board group, but we worked very hard on that committee. And to think that there's always an end game that we can do, it's just, it's, it's more than, you sh it's just, everybody should be upset about this, but I'm sure nobody else is upset than me, but thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this item? At this time, I'm sure I'll have others, but it, it, the way it's going, I don't. Councilman Mahoney, that's, that's fine. I, as you know, we'll always open it up to whoever needs to speak. Um, but I would just like to also ask folks if we get to speak in I statements, that would be great. Councilor Phelan? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I intend on voting this for tonight where I didn't have the opportunity to speak at the other meetings I will speak tonight. And I'm gonna stick on, on pretty much the issues. Um, we're paying seven and a half percent interest. There's no question that people are saying, oh, this isn't a refinancing. It is. If you could go from seven and a half to to two percent interest, and you had a house or a business, you would you would go for that. I don't think anyone talking to anyone in the that I've talked to, both in finance financial circles and regular residents. I mean, some people have said don't like it, but a lot of most more the people that I've talked to do. And and, if, and I think it's it's like refinancing your house. There are risks when you refinance your house. There are risks when you when you go out retirement and there will be risks now. There's gonna be risks even if we do nothing. And the bill is just gonna keep going and going. It's gonna keep eroding the budget. It's gonna keep, we're, we're gonna, uh, everyone wants to keep police fire, wants to keep schools. All this will begin to affect the budget dramatically. So if we do nothing, we simply go away. It's not gonna work. The bill is still gonna come due every month, every year. This bill is coming due. And if we don't do anything, it's going to erode the budget. Um, you know, uh, also, one thing that people are forgetting, everyone's saying, well, there's bad performances and this. Well, one thing that's a very important part of this is there was years that the city did not pay its share into the retirement. That's one of the reasons this is so big. It wasn't until pension reform in the late 80s and early 90s that people start, that the state forced the city to start paying. For several years, for almost 30 to 40 years, the city was not paying its part to the retirees. And over that time, more and more people retired. You came up with a bigger and bigger pension liability. Then there were years of, of not the best performances. And so all of these factors come in. It's not just all the retirement board did a terrible job and all this stuff. They worked hard on it. I'm not saying anything bad about them, but I think in this we've lost that there were several years the city did not pay this its, its fair share, and it actually used it to patch gaps in the budget. So this has all contributed to a very large, a very large pension liability. And I'm looking at it, and I just, I just look at it, and I and I think it comes down to a very simple issue. Do you want to pay seven and a half percent interest or do you want to pay two percent interest? And I think it's come, it's come down to that. I've read all the material. I've gone through everything. Uh, we've got voluminous uh, material on it. And this is strongly how I feel. And that's why I got the decision. I wanted to make sure I couldn't vote on this because I feel it's very important for the future of the city. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, before we move to a vote, any other questions or comments on this item? <laughs> Okay, seeing none, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councillor Andronico. Yes. Councillor Kane. No. Councillor DeBona. Yes. Councillor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. No. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Councillor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. No. Six members. The matter passes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, did you have other items in committee you wanted to report out? Yes, uh, thank you, President Liang. Also that evening, we uh, discussed, discussed in length 2021-052, appropriation of $9 million uh, for the purchase of the Adams Academy, 8 Adams Street, 24 Adams and 26 Adams for historic preservation purposes. And I like to move forward with a positive recommendation for that. Thank you. So you're making a motion to approve, correct? <laughs> uh, do we have a motion to approve? 
Motion, motion to approve, yeah. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Right, Councilor Phelan seconds. Do we have any questions or comments on this item? Okay, seeing none, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. No. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Eight members. Okay. Any others, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, uh, I have 2021-053 which goes with the purchase with the $9 million bond, the land order of taking for the Adams Academy and adjacent properties. And I'd like to make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. By Councilor Phelan, any questions or comments on this item? Okay, Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Councilor Andronico. Yes. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Council Mahoney. No. Council McCarthy. Yes. <clears throat> Council Palmucci. Yes. Councilor Phelan. Yes. President Liang. Yes. Eight members, the order passes. Thank you. Any others, Mr. Chairman? Well, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. So um, we'll move on to presentations of petitions, memorials, and remonstrance. Okay, seeing none, motions, orders, and resolutions. On scheduling of committee meetings and public hearings, so just to let folks know everything that had happened, to clarify, this Wednesday, June 23rd, starting at 5.30 p.m., Ms. Chairman will be um, leading the Finance uh, Committee for the Budget Hearings, Part 1, and then Thursday, June 24th, also starting at 5.30, we'll have Budget Hearings, Part 2. Uh, we do have to convene a special City Council meeting in order to approve or not approve um, the budget in a regularly scheduled Council meeting as of right now. I am anticipating that we can try to schedule the same night as Thursday so that we can all um, convene again, you know, immediately following the budget hearings, but I'll make sure to work uh, with Jen to clarify that and send that out before moving forward. Um, Madam Chairwoman Mahoney. Just, um, just for, out of curiosity. So I know that we extended the bond to 30 years. So the budget stays the same with the one that was submitted. Um, so there's no chance that that bond is going to come in any less than 30 years just just want i just want to be completely clear about that right because there was talk that it could be 21 years but just curious so the question is how many years the bond will be coming in point of, point of water madam president that's yeah. not even we've already, we've already gone by it oh no it's just it's about board. the budget i just want to make sure that i understand the budget sorry it's not matter it's just a matter of making uh, sure the budget's staying at 30 years okay. okay. Councilor Fallon, for the clarity and, and council mahoney i appreciate um, you asking the question i think if we could, Mr. Walker, could we just make a note of that question to make sure that it is answered during the budget um, as it is pertaining and or connected to any budget conversations? Madam President, was, was there a question there? I'm not. There was a question related to um, the bond amount, or I'm sorry, I apologize, the duration of the bond and how that would impact the finances. Yeah, the, the, the order is passed, Madam President, uh, provides for a range. No need for explanation. Like I said, I think Council Filling has a point that given the point of order, we're currently talking about scheduling a meeting now. So there is an item that I'd like to follow up with you on. I'm just plugging that right now. I'm just trying to get the to the nut of what the actual question is. Okay, I think we can clarify offline. I think there might be. Okay. So, thank you, Mr. Walker. All right, any questions about scheduling of committee meetings as I was just talking about? Okay, none, so we'll move on from that. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion to adjourn. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Take care, everyone.